heavily wooded area of the research center at Aberdeen Proving Ground will become a Japanese-held position, but only for the purposes of special ordnance tests. At this site, Jap-type bunkers, or pillboxes, are constructed according to Corps of Engineer designs, based on reports out of the Pacific Theater of Operations. The heavy pine logs are from the Maryland forests, and it's interesting to note that they are found to be even stronger than the coconut logs employed by the Japs. A total of six bunkers are built. They are two types with three designs of each type. All are similar except for size and extent. Also, while one type has log walls, the second utilizes earth-filled oil drums for its lower walls. The Ordnance Department will employ selected weapons against these pillboxes. The objective? to evaluate standard weapons and their ammunition, as well as new weapons developed for this type of warfare. These animated drawings will further amplify the construction detail. As mentioned, there is a variance as to size, but you're looking at a typical pillbox with typical dimensions. It cannot be emphasized too strongly that every possible feature of Jap construction is duplicated, so as to give maximum value to the firing test. From the start of our offensive against the Japs, their field fortifications presented many new problems. In general, the enemy camouflaged his installations to a high degree. Often, first knowledge of their presence was attained when men stumbled over them, never sure where the Jap lurked beneath the foliage. Observation has been most difficult, making reduction of the pillbox by direct artillery fire almost impossible, and the control of indirect fire most precarious for the observer. In selecting weapons for the Aberdeen tests, primary consideration was given to individual weights and mobility in the jungle. Generally, preference was given to weapons and ammunition capable of being broken down into manned transport loads, excepting, of course, the 75 mm and the 105 mm howitzers. We'll show the weapons in action. Details as to their new features and effectiveness will be discussed and illustrated after all the firing is completed. For the purposes of this film, we will show only the actual hits on the target. It is emphasized that with indirect fire, considerable difficulty is encountered in getting the center of impact onto the point target, especially when observation is difficult. It is expected that only a fraction of rounds fired will be direct hits. jungle, super quick fuses function in the trees. Delay fuses of the first 81 millimeter mortar rounds usually are initiated in treetops, but this works as an advantage for the dense overhanging foliage is removed by the explosion. In addition, air bursts result, which are most effective against exposed enemy personnel, although relatively ineffective against hostile troops under cover.
offer some results. While almost all the standard weapons of the soldier were fired at one time or another, we'll examine mainly those we actually saw discharged in this film. In the reduction of this type fortification, small arms ammunition was ineffective, except when fire could be brought to bear directly against personnel within the embrasures. Grenades projected by the carbine and rifles were most effective, but they too must be directed into the interior through embrasure openings. The Mark II fragmentation grenade with the adapter grenade projection M1 was projected from the various launchers. Here we see the 1903 rifle as it is used for grenade firing. The official nomenclature for both the 1903 and the 1917 rifle launcher is Launcher Grenade M1. The M9A1 anti-tank rifle grenade in this case was fired from the carbine, mounting the M8 launcher. Placing the blank cartridge into the chamber for grenade firing completes the procedure of getting ready to fire. Also included in the tests were the white phosphorus T5 rifle grenade and the M17 rifle grenade. As mentioned, all were at their best when striking into the embrasures. The same goes for the bazooka. It too was not effective when functioning took place on the exterior of the pillbox. This is the bazooka we used the 2.36 inch rocket launcher M1A1. When the rocket gets into the bunker, the results can be most destructive. Some of the bigger damage inside the pillbox is attributed to a new and most powerful weapon. The 38 pound 4.5 inch rocket M8 fired from the artillery rocket launcher T35, especially developed for this purpose. First, we're giving you an idea of the component parts and assembly of the charge. The launcher is a four-foot tube with removable legs and contains the rocket and electric firing device. It is sighted at close ranges. In jungle or heavily wooded terrain, the best accuracy was obtained at ranges 60 yards and below. Setting up in the field is accomplished as illustrated. Firing is done electrically by remote control. Returning to the damage caused by rockets thus fired, a muzzle velocity of over 800 feet per second gave penetrations through six feet of earth and three tiers of logs, permitting delay functioning of the fuse and the five pound bursting charge within the pillbox. In brief, too much cannot be said for the performance of the 4.5 inch rocket when fired, in this case from the artillery rocket launcher T-35. Regarding the results of mortar fire, modifications to some were found advantageous and development of new mortars was initiated. High angle fire of the M49A2 shell from the 60 millimeter mortar M2 was ineffective. However, a base firing mechanism was developed. The 60 millimeter mortar T18E6, permitting hand firing down to the horizontal. This permitted direct fire at low angles against embrasures. As with the 60 millimeter mortar shell, also the lightweight M43A1 projectile fired from the standard 81 millimeter mortar M1 lacked penetrative power and has only super quick fusing. More effective was the 10 pound M56 shell with M53 delay fuse. Another weapon whose fire caused considerable damage to the pillboxes was the 4.2 inch chemical mortar firing both 24-pound M3 high-explosive and 32-pound M4 shells. The only limitations were the base plate weight of 150 pounds and the somewhat long minimum range of 600 yards required for proper ammunition function. Damaging direct fire into the embrasures was accomplished by a high-explosive M63 shell fired from the 37-millimeter gun. To provide a lightweight carriage so that the complete unit could be broken down into man-packed loads, 
the 37 millimeter gun T-32 firing from a converted 50 caliber machine gun tripod was developed. The 75 millimeter pack howitzer also contributed to the overall reduction of the Jap type fortifications when firing its M48 high explosive shell with delay fuse setting. This weapon's value for jungle fighting is enhanced by its being capable of animal pack load transport. Easy penetration of the replica pillboxes was accomplished by the 33-pound high-explosive shell M1 with delay fuse setting, fired from the 105mm howitzer on either the M3 or M2 carriage. In conclusion, in these tests, the following weapons and ammunition were found to be most effective in destroying Japanese-type pillboxes and defending personnel. The 81mm mortar firing the M56 shell, 4.2-inch chemical mortar firing the M3 shell. The 4.5-inch rocket launcher T-35 firing the rocket M8. And the 105-millimeter howitzers firing M1 shell. All these high-explosive shells should be fired with delay fuses. 